Today I'm here with Rosiana. We're filming a bunch of videos together, so you just, you just get the Rosiana. We're filming a bunch of videos. We're filming a bunch of videos together. Don't know what number this will be. Who knows what month Could it is? Could be the end. Who knows? I feel like people see both of us as like very organized, very let's go do shit kind of people. I hope so. <laughs> So I thought we'd make a video where we talk about how we keep our stuff organized yeah. and how we get stuff done. We've made a list of some of the things that we We've do to be organized. We've organized this organized video. Yes, exactly. And the first point is lists. Yeah. Lists. How do you feel about lists? I freaking love, like, lists make my world go round, oh, honestly. Yes. I, I have to arrange things into lists and especially numbered lists. We take the, the Rory Gilmore approach with this. Yeah. I just think it makes, things make so much sense. I, I don't know what, like jeans were put into my head but one of them was a list jeans. List, yes. Um, and then one of the things that I do that I know a lot of people do, I think you might also do as well, is where you make a long list and then you cover up everything but the first four items. No, I've never done that before. That's really helpful for okay. me as well because otherwise sometimes I'll write a list of everything I need to do and then I'll just sit there and cry. Well I usually um, for work I'll make a long list that has everything, that's like yeah. an ongoing one and then I'll have a post-it where I'll just write four things down. Yeah. You know I'm that kind of person where I'll be doing something and then I go to a different window and then I'm like I was, I was doing, I can't remember what I was doing, and then I just look over at the four point list, and I'm like, right, it was one of these, cool. Yeah. I mean, what I find really helpful is, is is putting a list at the beginning of the working day if it's a work situation, and then having space between it for things I can add in, but trying mm. to prioritize things, you're also not letting the list writing take over your day, because that's also something <laughs> like... It's rewrite and, and rewrite. And like, off, like, inbox organization can take over your day. It really just has to be a quick way that you can see what you're doing that day with space to add new priorities in, and that you can cover up all but the first four, because otherwise you will just overwhelm yourself. Yeah. And then every time you do something, you cross it off, or tick it, and I like a big cross. Do you tick or cross through? A cross. Okay. After cross. You've got a cross through. Yeah, okay. double cross. I see some people who are like, oh, I like a neat tick no. so I can see what I've accomplished no. that day. No. Um, and then you just move the piece of paper or the post-it note down and then okay. it just shows the next. I like on Fridays before mm -hmm. I leave work, I need to write my Monday to-do list because mm -hmm. then I know I'll come in on Monday and I'm yeah. like, I'm ready, I know exactly what I'm doing. I like the idea that everything I've put on a to-do list I can just remove from my brain so I'm not constantly like trying to remember lots of stuff in the background. It's like, no, you write it down and it's out of your head. Because I know I will forget something, inevitably yeah. as well, yeah. like I really don't have a great memory. Uh, but really also just in my personal life as well, I find like shopping lists are great, I yeah. find um, like party invitation lists, I find... Do you use the iPhone apps? apps? The reminder one. I don't like it as much because something for me about writing it physically down goes into okay. my brain more. I just have a running list of stuff I need to buy, mm -hmm. stuff I need to do. So I have a separate list here on my nightstand that's just like, this is the things I'm doing today, but yeah. this is a general one. I've got one of like films I want to watch, a wish list for my birthday. So the next thing I think a lot about when getting organized is cleaning and picking things up because I do find it hard to concentrate and think and just function in an environment that isn't oh, yeah. clean and oh, organized yeah. and tidy. I can't do anything oh. before I've like organized. That's my nerves. And the big th first thing about this is that you have to get rid of stuff. If you want to live in a constantly clean, tidy environment, you have to get rid of like... You've got to marry condo that shit. You At least half your shit. <laughs> like, just get rid of it. But picking things up is um, kind of a, a different thing, I think. Sometimes when you're in a messy room, it can get quite overwhelming. Or you just feel like things are slightly disorganised. And you're sitting on the sofa and you're like, really, I'm so exhausted this week that all I can do is marathon something on Netflix or read this book for the next hour. But I find that every time, if you set your task, every time I get up to do something, whether that's go to the bathroom, pour myself a glass of water, answer the door, uh, take the rubbish out, whatever, you pick one thing up and put it back in its place mm -hmm. every single time, you won't believe how quickly it becomes tidy and also once you start picking one thing up and putting it away you're like oh well one I'll here. do the other one. I'll do another few things. And I think that that's kind of like a very kind and gentle way to get you to like clean your shit up. I need to get stuff off the floor. There's a lot of stuff on the floor right now but mm -hmm. for me if I need to like relax and do stuff even if I grab all the clothes around the floor and put it on a chair I already feel better. How to do things you don't want to do. I'm really bad at this. I feel like you're better at it because I am procrastinator number one when it comes to deadlines. Yeah, my uh, my big thing is just do it, <laughs> which isn't, I, I know it isn't well, helpful, well. but if you do it, then it's not going to be something you don't want to do anymore, it's going to be something you didn't want to do and that you did, mm. so you'll feel very smug about it. So like, you know, the big example of that is like taxes and financial stuff. Don't talk to me about um, <laughs> 
but it's that whole it's that whole thing like or if there's like an email I don't want to send if I send it it's not gonna be hanging in my head the whole day yeah. or if I have to have an awkward conversation with someone I'll just have that conversation and then that conversation will stop haunting me because I know that these things if I don't do them either immediately or within the near future then they it's do just happen. actually haunt me yeah. and then I just feel terrible and then sometimes I won't do them ever and then I just hate myself the way I trick myself into doing this I promise myself that I'll just do a little chunk of yeah. the thing I need to do and always when I do that it turns out that while I'm going it's the, the starting that's the hardest part so once you've done the little bit you're like oh well I'll do a little bit more it's like, it's like and a little hill. bit more yeah, yeah exactly so as long as you just get started when I had to write like an application letter I was like okay well I'll just sit down and just type out the points I want to have in it and while you're doing that like half an hour later you're like oh I did the whole thing all that's right really fine funny. <laughs> I love that you that like, works really well for me. You're like actively deceiving yourself. <laughs> and it works every time. I did it for tax as well. Like I was doing a little spreadsheet and I was like, well, I'll just start filling in this spreadsheet yeah. then. Nothing's more scary than like an empty page or an empty task. Yeah, that's you the worst. Start it. So you do have to start Same it. with essays. Just sit down and just type everything you can think of, like a big word jumble. And from there, it's just editing and, and adding. And do that immediately when you get the assignment. Honestly, it will, it will make your life so much better. Yep. Do it. We make a lot of YouTube videos. You've been doing it for 10 years. I've been doing it yeah. for seven or eight years. How do you get stuff done? How do you make stuff? What is your... Making YouTube videos? Yes. I mean, I try and always have like a notebook around where I can just jot down an idea or sometimes what actually what I do more often than not is write um, an email draft and just save it in drafts mm -hmm. or send it to myself yep. um, as an idea. Um, but other than that, it tends to just be like, my videos are very like off the cuff most of the time. Mm -hmm. I don't really plan them. Um, so I just try and edit the video as soon as possible after recording it because then I still have that energy and the excitement so, from I'm making so it. Bad at that. Problem though is that once I've edited it, I really want to upload it straight away. Yep. And you know, like strategically, you technically should space them out and like let people know when you're gonna upload. I throw I, all of that out the window. I'm so <laughs> bad at that. I'm just like, I made a video and I really want to share it, so I'm excited to do that. So I don't know that's the most organized side of me. I think that is part of our secret of getting videos done is that we just post them whenever they're done. Yeah. I post them at two in the morning. Yeah. Like the day before I have to go to work. I'm I post like, them it's on done. Sundays. Sundays are supposed to be like the Wednesday. I don't care. I, I post like Sundays 8 a.m. Because I think if you keep the motivation for yourself and you keep it exciting for yourself, that is such a good motivator that it's worth a lot more than maybe yeah. the statistic advantage. Because I feel like if I was posting on a schedule, I, I would skip weeks because yeah. I wouldn't make as many videos. And obviously the luxury there is that we don't do it for our job 100%. Like yeah. it's, it's not our living. So I think you would have to be more organized on that front if you weren't. One of my favorite things, the thing that organizes and rules my life is my Google Calendar. Mm. We're big fans of the Google Calendar. I literally like go around converting people to really? Google Calendar. And it's like, you know what? Do you have Google Calendar? <laughs> because you can color code. It's always with you. It's on your phone. It's on your laptop. I feel like once I've put it in my Google Calendar, it's gone into my mental calendar as really? well. I schedule in my YouTube stuff. I do all my like, when I'm meeting people, all my job stuff, any events that I might want to go to, everything is in my Google Calendar. The best thing about Google Calendar for me is the shareability of it and the fact that you can share your Google Calendar with other people and they can share it with you or, or show what you want with them. And so obviously I do a lot of work with with scheduling and managing other people's schedules and my schedule and so on. Um, but the other great thing that I use it for in my more like the assistant -y side of things and the planning and scheduling side of things is sending out Google Calendar invites yeah. so that you know that everyone is on the exact same page about what time, is especially when there's time zones involved, um, what okay. time you're oh, meeting, God. where you're meeting, what the phone number is, because there's kind of no real excuse if you sent out a calendar invite or, you know, and you can see everyone's participating. There's just, it's a great way to store information and share it. Um, and that for me is one of the best things about Google Calendar as well as like the syncing and so on. But yeah, the color coding though, fab. I've got the so many best. different Google Calendars. I have like my personal one, my work one, my YouTube one, my events one, my phone calls one, so many. So good. You can turn them on and off if you feel a bit too mm. overwhelmed, turn all your work stuff off. So then when it comes to financial organization, I think that that's something that's really important to set yourself up with a real like structure and strategy to do that as soon as possible. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to back away from this one because <laughs> it's, I think, especially if you're self-employed as well, it's more important than anything, but it really is important whatever walk of life you're in, whether you're working or not, um, just so that you can keep track of, firstly, that all the money that should be coming in and going out is going in and going out, um, that it has gone in and out, and structuring it. You can see, like, models for financial spreadsheets online, things like that, but, I mean, at the most basic level, it's in, <laughs> number, like, it's, like, date, amount in, amount out, date and then the like description for what that is 
and any kind of extra notes. That's so the do it, basic. Level. Do you do it for like invoices? You I do it for and everything. Everything. Every, every well, where I can, I mm -hmm. do. Sometimes I don't like. Sometimes if I get a drink somewhere, I forget to put it in my account. Yeah. But it's a really good way. And then once you, if you want to get really nerdy about it, then you can start categorizing it into different categories of like work expense. Um, work drinks, uh, social drinks, uh, casual meeting drinks, like that kind of like, yeah. I have like, such a hyper categorization affliction um, that it's very helpful to me to see exactly where my money's going, where I'm spending too much, where I'm spending too little. You might be able to gather that drinks is where I'm spending too much from what I've mentioned so far. The other side of it is receipts and if you, especially if you're self-employed, but again for everyone, hang on to your receipts and either scan them straight away or like keep them in a folder but write notes on them as to what they are. Yeah, because you will forget. You think you remember? Ones, I always you think I remember. remember and I won't remember. I'll be like, what is this weird place and who did I go with and was it a work thing or was it not? Oh, or split wise. <laughs> Flipwise is a really great app. You can add all your friends to it, or we used to live together with Marion as well, so we had a little house group. And you basically, whenever someone borrows money, or you pay for someone, you put it in, and you can say, this person owes me this much, or we've split the bill, that kind of stuff. So we recently booked a holiday with Marion, so she just put, like, I just put in, you owe me this much money. And the next time we went out for food, which was yesterday, she just said, oh, I'll pay the bill, put it into Splitwise, that will figure out how much she still okay. owes me. It's really nice when you're buying like stuff for the house, you just put it in, yeah. you never have to quabble again about expenses, bills, anything. It is heaven. And you can also split it between a group. So if I owe you money, or yeah. you owe Marion money, it will just tell me to pay Marion. It takes a lot of the tension out. If it's in Splitwise, it's you were there yeah, when the they law. put it in. It's law. Those are our organizational tips. How to get things done, how to make yourself feel, ready to conquer the world, this mm -hmm. is how we do it. Color-coded calendars and lists. This is how we do it. Thanks uh, to Rosanna for being on my channel. Go subscribe to her YouTube channel where she sometimes talks about organizing things, but also about lots of other things. If you have any really good organizational tips, please do leave them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you guys later. Three, two, one, doing!